Today I'm going to talk to you about hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a medical condition meaning water on the brain. There are two main types of hydrocephalus. Congenital hydrocephalus, which means you were born with it, and acquired hydrocephalus, which is acquired later in life. Acquired hydrocephalus is usually acquired from head trauma, tumor, hemorrhage, meningitis, things like that. There are two other, less common forms of hydrocephalus. The first of which is ex vacuo. Ex vacuo hydrocephalus is acquired from stroke, traumatic injury, while normal pressure hydrocephalus, the second of the two, is more similar to acquired hydrocephalus and is more common in the elderly. There are currently two treatments, although they are not cures. The first and more common treatment is the shunt, which is a device consisting of a celastic catheter and a valve. Celastic is a combination of plastic and silicone and is used because plastic would break apart basically too easily. There are many different kinds of shunts and what kind you have depends on where the cerebrospinal fluid drains to. So if it drains to your abdomen, you would have a ventriculoperitoneal shunt or a VP. Now what does a shunt do? Think of a balloon. As you add air, the balloon expands and fills up, much like a child's head would expand if extra cerebrospinal fluid were draining into their brain. A shunt acts like a small hole in the balloon or, I guess, in their brain and keeps things normal. With the shunt, there are many complications, such as a plug in the catheter caused by tissue, infection, which is usually a staph infection, and detaching of the catheter from the shunt. With age, a patient can also outgrow their catheter, which would be the same as the catheter detaching. The other form of treatment is a third ventriculoscopy. This is a surgical procedure where a hole is made in the base of the third ventricle to allow CSF to flow to the subarachnoid space beneath the third ventricle and be reabsorbed. The downside to this treatment is that it can reverse itself, usually within five years. Day-to-day -day life with hydrocephalus has many restrictions, such as basically avoiding high g-forces such as those found on roller coasters, and you also can't participate in any hard-hitting sports like football or rugby, that sort of thing, as both of them risk detaching the shunt from the catheter. Sleeping with hydrocephalus can also be difficult, thanks to gravity. Because of gravity, if you have a shunt as your form of treatment, you can't sleep flat since the CSF won't be able to drain properly. You need to sleep elevated, or you basically have seizures in your sleep. Bad weather can also greatly affect people with hydrocephalus, as the majority of them are very sensitive to the changes in the barometric pressure. So when it's cloudy and rainy, we're basically going to feel horrible. Surgeries are also a very common occurrence if you have hydrocephalus, as you pretty much need one whenever something goes wrong. At 19, I've only had 37, which isn't a whole lot. I met a girl a few weeks ago, she looked to be about 12, and she was at over 80. And that's pretty much it. It's hydrocephalus, folks.